The white paper explains what Bitcoin is and how it works as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. I get so excited just talking about this, okay? <laughs> Today we're gonna talk about crypto. We're just gonna talk about crypto. I think I'm gonna mention some books, but it's gonna be fleeting. This video will not all be about books and reading. It will mostly be about cryptocurrency, and I'm excited to do this. I'm thinking about just dedicating this video to resources and references about crypto learning and education. Um, things that I have found helpful along my journey um, so far and that I still find to be really interesting and stimulating for me every day whether it's um, news or like blogs and long-form writing maybe Twitter accounts people influencers that um, are really prevalent in the community or that I have just found to be um, enlightening um, to follow so hopefully we can dig into some of that basically I just want to touch on some of the things that taught me the most from Bitcoin to Ethereum to DeFi to just blockchain technology in general and learning a little bit more about the technical side, government regulation and policies, global adoption of cryptocurrency and like world events, um, things on a global scale, and also traditional finance a little bit. Um, just along the way sometimes it's been helpful for me to learn a little bit more about investing which by the way i'm not a financial professional at all so nothing in this video will be financial advice or investing advice um it will just be educational content and information that i found helpful that is supposed to be maybe educational for you as well or entertaining so whether you're just getting started in crypto or you're just looking to refresh your feed, I hope that you'll find something here that's of interest to you. And if you do, or if you want to hear more on crypto and books, please subscribe down below. So first thing that I do wanna note, a lot of these individuals and people that I'm going to mention are like Bitcoin maximalists. And if you haven't heard that term or Bitcoin maxis, um, what it really means in my eyes is that um, people who take on that framework or maybe see with that lens tend to elevate Bitcoin in terms of its role as a cryptocurrency compared to other coins, other assets in the cryptocurrency ecosystem and there's a whole host of reasons why that is um, that i'm not going to get into right now but mainly they see the value of bitcoin oftentimes longer term as a store of value for humanity what an amazing thing and now that's one viewpoint and not everybody subscribes to that um in that's totally okay. But I find that some of these writers and thinkers, they have a heavy emphasis on Bitcoin and it has helped me learn about crypto as a whole because Bitcoin is really foundational. It was that first cryptocurrency um, to be really successful in that way. In that whole cypherpunk um, era, which I love learning about. I think it's so cool. There were actually other um, currencies that were attempted that were started. This whole philosophy and framework of building digital currencies um, was around before the Bitcoin white paper came out. However, um, Bitcoin was really the first one to do so successfully. It was that first truly successful digital currency. And in my opinion, it's 
sort of just the best place to start. I wouldn't be able to learn about Ethereum without having kind of the knowledge of what Bitcoin is, what it can provide for people, for communities, for society, um, and also a little bit, little bit of the technical knowledge of what blockchain is and how that functions. And then you can sort of carry that into all the other coins and assets and projects that are going on right now that are so exciting. So a uh, couple things. I'm going to try to intersperse some images throughout this video um, because I don't have a lot to show you, but it is gonna be a really talkative chit chat kind of video. I'm also going to link down below a lot of the references I'm mentioning. I'm going to try to do that for all of them, but the list might get too long. And so if I don't, if you have anything you'd like to add, please throw it in the comments. But yeah, I'm gonna to try to include links and images as much as I can. Okay, the first resource and reference for cryptocurrency education that I think is the most important is the white paper. It's available online. It's available in all different languages. I don't think it's that intimidating once you get into it. At first, when I first read it, I really didn't know that much about Bitcoin. And that's what a white paper is supposed to do, introduce you to a technology and I just think this is the best thing to read, um, even if you've never read anything about Bitcoin before. Um, most people hadn't, right, when it came out. Um, so on October 31st, 2008, um, this white paper was introduced to the world by Satoshi Nakamoto, which um, if you don't know, that is the anonymous creator of Bitcoin. There were other people involved in the project. Um, but Satoshi um, did go under a pseudonym and this person or people is are credited um, with the creation of this digital cryptocurrency and the white paper, it essentially just explains how Bitcoin is a peer to peer electronic cash system and um, it's the best way to learn about Bitcoin. Um, and it's also something that you might want to read over and over again at different points um, in your life and in your journey with cryptocurrency. It's the hallmark of Bitcoin and the best way, I think, to learn about it. What? It's okay. I'll be done in a second. Next, I'm going to talk about some books and I'm going to keep this part very short. I know. It's not like me, but um, there's just a couple ones that I want to mention. The majority of my um, crypto education has not actually been through books, though there are so many on my TBR that I want to read. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so um, first of all, The Bitcoin Standard by Safety and Amoose. I talk about this in one of my other videos, um, but I really just kind of mention one chapter that really um, was the most interesting to me. This book covers everything from, um, again, Bitcoin, its inception, its purpose, um, what it can do for society, as well as some of the history behind currencies in the world and how people trade and how people um, ascribe value um, to any system or any item and all of that was super interesting to me sort of the anthropological um, lens into finance that he um, outlines in his book also he talks about what's working and what's not in terms of finance in our in our world globally um, he talks about inflation. He talks about um, really the issues and pitfalls of fiat currency or traditional um, currency. He also, towards the end, I thought the end of this book was like the most interesting. Um, he talks a lot about like certain arguments that I've heard all the time, but I haven't really like heard good counter arguments for. And he certainly 
goes for it um, and that includes like blockchain technology generally and how it might function aside from bitcoin and whether or not it provides any value basically why it why it might not work in other cases other than bitcoin um, so that's a that's like a controversial one um, and he does kind of mention other coins other assets um, and sort of the casino effect i guess you could call it of cryptocurrency and investing more generally and i found that to be really interesting so it's a great book um one of the books that's on my tbr that i really want to read is bitcoin in black america by isaiah jackson i have watched interviews with him and i have read a lot of information about this book but I have yet to read it and I feel like it's so important in terms of outlining um, some of the things we're seeing, especially in America, on race and finance and that bigger picture, how cryptocurrencies can afford opportunity and really change the landscape socially and structurally um, of our country and of our communities. I am very excited to read this book. The next book that I wanted to mention was um, The Price of Tomorrow. I also talk about this quickly in another video. It's not really all that much about cryptocurrency. Um, Jeff Booth, the author, really just gets into finance in general and technology, how the two relate and what's happening currently um, in terms of deflation and how technology and the rapidly changing um, technological world is impacting our economy, what we are going to need to do in order to maybe course correct. I would recommend The Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth if you're interested in getting like a primer on not necessarily cryptocurrency but more just tech and finance how the two relate what deflation really means for our world and the future of money um so yeah i would recommend it um but if you really want just like a book about crypto and to learn about bitcoin the bitcoin standard in my opinion is just the best resource for that. Okay, I'd love to talk a little bit about news and news outlets. This one, I really just want to emphasize, like I don't get my crypto news from mainstream news outlets. I just don't. Even if they're kind of more financial leaning, I think it's interesting to read those articles. Um, it's certainly helpful, but the sources that I find to be the best or the most up-to-date for cryptocurrency um, are newsletters and news sources dedicated to crypto and also I hate to say this like Twitter okay don't get mad at me um, I enjoy Coindesk I think that they put out great content I subscribe to a bunch of their newsletters they have many so word to the wise if you do want to get some newsletters to your inbox coindesk sort of like um you have to check the boxes i think of what you want and they have many different n categories depending on what you're looking for so if you are signing up um because if you're like me and you sign up for all of them you're gonna get all the news sometimes sometimes it's not as quick of a cycle with Coindesk and also Cointelegraph, that's another one. They're both kind of similar um, in, I think they're both good quality news outlets in my opinion, but sometimes they're not honestly as quick as like even, even some YouTubers and podcasts or like they're not as quick as the information you're going to get on Twitter or rapid feed. And sometimes that can be misleading information and I get that. But just keep in mind, like sometimes these news outlets, it takes a little while for them, even for them to kind of catch up. But for the most part, Coindesk and Cointelegraph, I find to be pretty reliable and interesting. They're both very informative and detailed. Um, also, Coindesk has like a ticker or basically they list the prices for a bunch of different coins so it's great to kind of just hop on there or refresh that if you just want to kind of check how 
prices are looking right now. So that's always a good resource. A lot of exchanges now are trying to really beef up like their um, educational, educational content and news. And so like um, Coinbase is a great example of that. They have a wonderful newsletter. Um, I received that in my inbox as well. Again, like it's not going to be as quick as some news sources, but it it's um, really helpful to kind of have those sort of sound bites every week or um, a lot of times they give little educational snippets of information. Sometimes they have quizzes. Um, okay, what's next? One of the coolest. Okay. <laughs> um, my lighting is all over the place, but you're sticking around. One sentence. <laughs> Sorry. This leads me to podcasts, influencers in general, YouTube. Um, I'm going to lump all of that together. Sorry if it gets confusing. Um, in my eyes, in the crypto world sometimes this is news and that gets tricky right because it's like who do you trust and is the information i'm getting quality information um, but a lot of times the most important facts and the most um, relevant information for me comes from podcasters and youtubers so with that i can't say <laughs> i really like to listen to the following. First, I have to shout out um, Pomp's podcast. Anthony Pompliano um, has a great podcast on finance and cryptocurrency and investing. And I took his class, Pomp's Crypto Academy. It was life changing for me, revolutionary. I met so many awesome people. <laughs> I need a water anyway. I learned so much from that class and just in terms of being able to meet such amazing people and network, it was such a great opportunity for me. So of course I'm gonna um, shout out Anthony Pompliano at the Pomp Brothers, um, both podcast wise on YouTube, but also um, on Twitter. I'm gonna get into Twitter after this, but basically like I just enjoy following his insights on finance, on the economy, mainly Bitcoin, and also just crypto in general, what's happening, um, what's exciting in this sphere, in this realm. He always kind of gives his hot take and um, he has a really good foundational like educational platform that I find to be a great place to start. I'm going to throw in here one that really isn't like crypto crypto. Lex Friedman is my favorite podcaster and I've mentioned this in another video. Um, even though he doesn't talk about crypto all the time, it's really more tech oriented. Um, he focuses on technology, AI, sometimes cryptocurrency, oftentimes. Um, it's really his interviews are spectacular. He interviews the most amazing individuals. And like I've said before, it, everyone brings something different to the table because they're all really masters of their craft. They're amazing at what they do and what they know. Um, and even if I don't agree with everything that any, everyone has to say on that platform, it gives such a great space for discussion. And Lex Friedman, I think, is just really graceful and kind and insightful. And like, I adore him. Okay. I guess for you, that's mainly like my YouTube. I could go down that rabbit hole, but that's mainly where I'm at. Just in terms of speakers, writers, business people, like when we're talking about influencers in all of those realms, 
Lynn Alden is really like such a great source of information on Bitcoin, on cryptocurrency. Um, I find that her tweets are great. So I follow her on Twitter and her articles are so well written and so detailed and her research is really robust. And I love, um, I, I'll link it down below. She has an article that's like the the greatest thing to read um, if you're not introduced to her already, which is on the environment. She really outlines what the true impacts are of Bitcoin, mining Bitcoin, and um, mining cryptocurrency um, on the environment. And that's obviously a very hot button issue, but it's also one that I think there's a lot of misinformation around. Um, our energy usage in general culturally um especially in america we definitely need to like think about that in a smart way and sometimes it's sort of a bummer when only the crypto sphere is being scrutinized um for its like utility of energy and um how that comes about especially because there are solutions and there are innovative technologies and things happening that could really help us like leverage this moment to help the environment and have better practices around energy consumption um, but also treat our economy in a way where we can grow and flourish as humans and as people and um, basically have all that we need and for our future. And so I just think that Lynn Alden does a wonderful job of like the charts and the graphs and all of her points are so sound and I would really recommend checking that out. Also, in any interviews um, that you come across with Lynn Alden, I would recommend um, watching those. Um, she's just such a great voice in this community. Which leads me to Twitter because I mentioned, you know, Lynn Alden and the Pomp Brothers, both um, all of those individuals I love following on Twitter. Um, but Twitter's really, it's a space where, like, if you want to keep abreast of all of the exciting things going on in crypto, for better or for worse, um, I think Twitter can be a, a place where stuff is really popping you know what I'm saying so I think I would say I'm not going to recommend any of these people these aren't recommendations I'm just going to tell you some of the people that I follow and why they might be interesting of course Michael Saylor would be one of these he was one of the first people I ever followed on Twitter um his thoughts on Bitcoin are really well framed and well said a lot of the time and they're short and they're sweet especially on Twitter and I love being able to just see those um, come into my feed and retweet them if I want to um, because he has some great things to say. Michael Saylor um, was in a debate on Bitcoin versus gold. I think it's called like Bitcoin versus gold debate. You can find it on YouTube. I'll try to link it. That's also one of the best resources. Um, one of the first things that I watched when I was learning about Bitcoin in comparison to um, gold and both of those as stores of value and how one might outperform the other, the advantages, as Michael Saylor argues, of Bitcoin over gold in that sense, really analyzing what makes something a good store of value. I could get into this so much more, I really want to, but I'm actually gotta, okay, so watch that if you want to. Um, obviously like Elon tweets a lot about crypto and you know what like it's interesting to follow I'm not gonna lie it's just interesting having him on my feed it's there's never a dull moment and um he has a lot of influence right like a lot of these people it's like they can say one thing and it can really like turn the tides even if only for a day or a week and then it goes right back to the way it was but they really can um, influence people and so it's interesting for me to keep an eye on some of those individuals even if I don't agree with all of it or sometimes I do sometimes I don't I also follow Blockworks, both Twitter and YouTube 
Will Clemente, Adam Back. I follow Vitalik on Twitter and I, I love, like, it's always exciting to me to hear, um, you know, what he is thinking about. <laughs> What else? Swan Bitcoin um, on Twitter. Swan Bitcoin in general. I guess now I'm going to get into blogs and writing. Before I get into that, I will also mention Twitter is a great place just for following um, your favorite NFT sources or NFT creators. Um, it's a great place to really visually see what's going on in the NFT community. And that's exciting. So all of that. Yeah, it's great but blogs and um, writing in general. Let's see. Swan Bitcoin is a wonderful like stockpile of really strong articles with foundational research. That's one go-to for me in terms of when I want to like cite something really good or use um, an article for something that I'm writing in terms of just great research and having um, great statistics or information to like back up what I want to say. Of course, on Medium, there's so many insightful authors. Um, all, like all sites, you really need to, with blogs, it's up to you um, to decide what you think is good information, is quality information. I can't really give advice, but for me, when I'm um, reading articles on Medium, I just always try to make sure to click on the author's name, look them up or look into that more. Sometimes it's companies, right? It's it's sometimes coming from a company um, and it might kind of really be like a sales pitch and you don't always realize it, but it can also be very helpful to understand new technologies, blockchains. Um, so yeah, it's Medium is great for that. Um, I write there. I also write for um, a platform on me through medium called insider finance wire and I enjoy reading what other authors on that platform have to say I also write for hacker noon which I love reading hacker noon articles again you're getting information from people who most of the time just really enjoy tech they want to talk about tech or crypto and share their knowledge and it's a super creative space i feel like there's always um an interesting assortment of articles all the time and it's rapidly updating like it's constantly being refreshed with um really interesting pieces and so i like hacker noon um and i write for them maybe i'll link some of the stuff that i write below too this can be a plug great fantastic um there's also i'd say there's like some controversial writers i'm not even gonna get too into right now but I would just say like I like to read the things that I don't always agree with and I like to read the things that question that make me question um, what I'm constantly hearing or what I hear in mainstream outlets all the time I just really enjoy um, writers that use their brains and make me use mine um, and then also for writing of course, I have to mention um, Dare Gigi, and apologies if I am pronouncing that wrong, but um, there's basically this site uh, compiles really wonderful articles. I think a lot of them are also on audio, if I have that correct, so you can listen to them um, instead if you prefer that. But I really um, have learned a lot um, from that site and uh, just in-depth, detailed um, articles and topics. Okay. This is going to be the longest video, but like, let's just go for it. Right. Um, okay. I have one more topic really. And that's classes, formal training. Um, yikes, right? Cause sometimes it's a lot of money, but I have found that there are a lot of classes out there that are worth their weight in Bitcoin. They're really, um, they're really helpful and don't necessarily cost a whole ton. First of all, I'm sure, like if you want to do a program, whether it was more for tech, like if you're looking for a boot camp program, or um, maybe you just want to go back to school and do like a, a formal classes um, in crypto, there's a lot of options out there for you. Um, I haven't necessarily taken that route yet, 
And for me, I found that, for example, like MIT has their open courseware where you can, I think on YouTube, um, there are those courses for cryptocurrency with Gary Gensler. So you're getting like, a, that's some serious education, right? Especially if you um, are interested in that lens. I have watched a lot of those classes on YouTube and it really feels like I'm sitting in on a great lecture, um, regardless of you know your opinion on Gary Gensler, how you feel about him. I felt like the information was very helpful for me because it was taking a step back and looking at um, crypto kind of just beginning to end like from Bitcoin and learning about blockchain technology, learning about ledgers, then from there kind of getting into Ethereum and DeFi and um, smart contracts and uh, he just it's like a natural progression uh, i think of a lot of the topics that are helpful to be um to be learning about in cryptocurrency it felt like a really logical progression of that and it felt really in depth and i thought that they were great and they're free mit also has coding classes which i hope to take um, i haven't been able to and i've been really like putting that off but i would love to take some classes and again they are free i don't know how difficult it is to do on your own but um you know with coding there's so many boot camps and there's so many classes online that there's just a lot of options if you really want to go the technical route um coursera has some great classes i took um, classes in digitalization of finance through Copenhagen Business School and it was really interesting it was just really different I will say Coursera they don't feel as structured to me as a lot of the other classes I've taken um, they were less expensive so that was nice because they were really accessible however they're not always organized in the way that like a formal uh, university might um, otherwise even though you're getting oftentimes classes through really great colleges and universities and schools um, it's just structured a little bit differently currently taking a class in cryptography um, through Stanford on Coursera another great example of you're getting education from a really you know esteemed university but at the end of the day it's just an online class and that one's pretty fast-paced like I would say I think they have, so they have classes from Wharton, they have international classes, like I mentioned, Copenhagen, there's also French institutions, a lot of great, you know, finance classes, it seems like they have to offer. But again, all that's on your own time, you have to pace yourself. And again, it's cheaper a lot of times, like for me, these classes were less expensive than some of the ones I was looking at through universities um, in a more formal setting. However, I had to really pace myself and I had to um, like structure a lot of that on my own. So that's, you know, pros and cons. Last but not least, I have to mention Pomp's Crypto Academy. It was wonderful for me. I, I had a really foundational knowledge of Bitcoin and um, the crypto ecosystem in a nutshell. We got to do um, some great projects and the homework was not intrusive. It just felt um, helpful and I met so many wonderful people. They've created such amazing things um, beyond, the, beyond the class. There's so many creative people and I would love to, to shout those out. If you've made it this far, I'm so grateful for you. Thanks. Drop in a, uh, the nerdy emoji, like the, the face with the glasses down below, please. Mainly on Substack, there's some wonderful Substack material and newsletters coming from um, some of these individuals um, from Palm's class. I would say my, uh, I'm just gonna name a few and I'm really sorry if I've taken class with you and I, I missed something that you've done. Please comment, link it down below. Um, the Bullet uh, from my friend Rob is a great newsletter. I enjoy getting that every week and reading it. Um, I also love The Misfit, some really fantastic viewpoints there into kind of things that are happening and trends that we're seeing in crypto. My friend Jim has one, um, Jim Suli, I think I'm saying that right, sorry if I'm not. 
Um, my friend Jack has um, one called Bitcoin from Zero and he just started that up and I really loved his first piece which was um, kind of digging into inflation and how Bitcoin could be a wonderful solution to a lot of these systemic issues that we're seeing. Also, my friend Maria and I started a Substack. It goes out every Tuesday and it's called Women in Crypto. Um, I will link that below as well. Um, basically, it's a newsletter for just really foundational crypto topics and interesting crypto themes that we think individuals might want to learn about. And hopefully these newsletters will just help empower women in this community to not feel so alone and to learn about really great topics um, that are top of mind right now in the crypto space. And since we're on the topic of crypto education, it brings me to another point that I find really to be so important. Um, I think oftentimes there's this misconception that I definitely had when I first started learning about crypto, but now I've sort of seen it in a different way. And that's that I always felt like I was late to the game um, or getting into this so much later than everyone and that I was missing out on something. And I think that there's something really misleading about that whole idea, especially when you start to learn more and you start to take classes and you start to really immerse yourself in the Bitcoin community or in different crypto communities. One, you realize that people are so welcoming and people want to teach you things and want to share their knowledge and that there's so much to learn. There are things happening every single day. And so because of that, there's always going to be a novelty to it and there's always going to be um, some aspects of it that are new. And in terms of the history of it, um, the history of Bitcoin and um, the all of the things that have happened over the years, that's information that you can learn at any time. Um, I guess all of this is just to say that whether this is completely new to you or you're a total crypto pro, or you're somewhere in the middle, um, there's a place for all of us and learning is an ongoing process. There's always room to be educated, to educate yourself and to educate others. And that's what I love so much about this space. And there's really no such thing as being like late to the party, even though that's how I felt when I first started investing and when I first started taking crypto classes, because there's just so much to learn and it is really exciting. And it's easy to kind of think from a traditional finance standpoint, um, when people talk about like the volatility of Bitcoin and um, of a lot of cryptocurrencies, it's easy to see it in this way of like, wow, so much has happened. It's too late to get involved. And I think that that's really a shame. It's up to you to decide how you feel. But for me, when I look at um, cryptocurrency and what it can do for society and globally for people in general I see it as more of a philosophical thing like oh wow there's so much behind this that's different from what I've learned about traditional finance that it's more of a journey and less about a destination. It's not so much for me about making quick money or seeing something happen overnight. For me, um, cryptocurrency is really just all about financial freedom. Okay, I guess that's it. My battery is dying and this has been a fun and lengthy video. For me, I'm just enjoying chatting about crypto. I love it. And if you enjoy it too, um, stick around, subscribe. Like, yeah. Okay. This has been great. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day or evening, wherever you are. It was good talking to you. Bye-bye.